All right, so we're on tip number nine, and this one is around MQTT, but importantly, this is about decoupling devices from applications. Decoupling applications from devices makes real scalability possible because it lets you access all the device data that was directly coupled to a single application or stuck in the field. It provides a single source of truth for all your tags. It eliminates the need to use SCADA software as middleware. It makes it possible to replace individual devices as necessary without having to replace everything else. And maybe most importantly of all, decoupling solves the pain points on the plant floor by providing a superior OT solution while being able to deliver data to the business. We cannot get to high-level applications like machine learning or analytics or advanced analytics until we improve the situation on the plant floor first, right? So to, yeah, we'll look at the traditional in, in just a minute here. Um, but speaking of open standards, let's look at MQTT again. Uh, it is a lightweight published and subscri subscribed protocol that enables message-oriented middleware architectures. It allows you to build a more robust architecture by delivering data to line of business applications. It also lets you leverage edge computing to pull data at the source at faster rates and efficiently deliver that data to the business. So looking at a, at a traditional architecture, uh, one that is coupled together, and we, and we can see that applications are connected to those devices directly. Um, and uh, uh, most of the time it'd be SCADA, right? SCADA would be talking to all those PLCs and ultimately we might have another MES system talk to the PLCs or we might uh, have other, other business systems talk to our SCADA, make it middleware. It's not really designed for that. Uh, in fact, that data is not just something that SCADA is gonna look at. That data is available, it's, it's something that the business is important. It's important to the entire business, right? Data is vital to the entire organization. There could be any kind of data that's out there. And so ultimately we looked at a decouple architecture we can have devices um, or PLCs and, and such with, with edge devices in front of them, publish data into infrastructure, and then we can have multiple consumers of that data. So we basically can allow anything to tap in to work with that, and we can have new devices plug in, uh, very plug and play, very, uh, you know, a very much, much more robust, much more scalable system at the end of the day. And we're not suggesting you have to completely rip and replace everything you have and, and completely transition over, but as you go forward, consider leveraging decoupled architectures because it's going to give you much more scalability as devices, uh, as, as we add a lot more devices. So again, just to highlight here of MQTT, the, the benefits are the decoupling devices from applications, it's low bandwidth, it would support by exception, it supports TLS security, has outbound connections only, has stateful awareness, offers uh, you know, quality service data delivery, provides single source of truth, has plug and play functionality, and it can eliminate cutovers. Um, you, by, you can have parallel applications real easily and, and test out some new technologies without interrupting our operations. We keep our operations running efficiently and, and have it get the data that it needs and not have it get data that it doesn't need to then be a middleware to something else. We can make our systems more robust by being able to tap into the data that it requires. And ultimately you can easily start adding in more data um, that we can leverage. Data is, is critical in digital transformation. And uh, by, by leveraging these kind of architectures, you get to uh, you know, a, a much more robust system. Lastly, because we're doing that, there's some amazing smart sensors that are out there today. Um, and these often speak MQTT or you know, some open standard right away that are designed to, they have the data, it's their data, they're gonna publish it in. And we wanna be able to get you know, that data, the new data into infrastructure. A lot easier today to get a brand new sensor, smart sensor, get the data from it because it's smart, right? We're not having to wire it to a PLC or anything like that. Um, and there's a lot of benefits of that. People are already leveraging these things, right? Um, you don't have to spend time really configuring them. You don't. You can just hook them up and you can start leveraging that data very, very quickly and easily. And also very cost effectively. Uh, we're not, you know, a lot of times we're not running, uh, you know, P we're not running conduits or power. We're not having to wire it to a PLC and then program PLCs. We're just putting a sensor in and we can leverage it. Uh, common examples of, of things that people are doing, like sensors for vibration monitoring. So especially to predict, predict machine failures. Uh, getting temperature and pressure sensors out there. Um, we have companies doing leak detection, or they're adding flow sensors to monitor water levels, um, water leak detection. Uh, we can get temperature changes, pressure changes, uh, chemical leakage detection, um, uh, pump energy usage. We can see how much you know pumps are uh, are being are from energy standpoint are being used. Uh, flow rates, right? Putting these smart flow rate sensors out there. Water quality and so much more, right? There's a lot of great examples of being able to put a smart, new smart sensor in, and we can put these in parallel with our existing infrastructure. 
But if you think about it, we can get our, our brownfield infrastructure and our greenfield infrastructure, if we connect connected to the same, basically same infrastructure, all that data can be made available to the business. Not only can we use it in our operation system locally, but then we can start thinking about those higher ML, AI, and tools that are available. In fact, a lot of the smart sensors that we bring in already are connected to some cloud services that provide that. So looking at this holistically, there's um, if we transform our architecture, transform that, we can get to a pretty amazing place. Uh, the main thing to keep in mind here is that as data becomes more critical, you want to increase accessibility as well as how efficiently a user can find and access that information. At the same time, you want to make sure that the same data is, you know, that, that systems are secure and uh, that we're putting our, our best foot forward from a cybersecurity stance. And look, the great thing is that we, all this technology exists today. Uh, it's just about working, having OT and IT work together fundamentally to apply these techniques, upgrade our systems to something better, and and, and just get the benefits. And, and again, we could do this all on, along the way. We can get we can get those benefits immediately in parallel with what we already have.